Well, I'm John Gacy. I'm from Waterloo, Iowa. And you're a man of some authority here. What, what is your title? Well, I'm first cook in the kitchen, and I run the, uh, the morning meal and the afternoon meal in the kitchen. John, how long have you been here? I've been here now a year and about two weeks. Why am I asking how uh, long do you plan to take up residence here? Well, I hope to be getting out sometime in May. Well, good. Good. You're going to continue as a, as a cook? Use that as a, as a profession? You right. Have? This is my profession before I came in. All right. Food service. In Des Plaines, Illinois, near Chicago, a man who served time in prison for sex crimes was let out. Today, they found the bodies of at least three young boys buried under his house. He is charged with murder. Here's Jim Cummings. Police have been watching John Gacy's suburban Chicago home for the past 10 days. They became suspicious when 15-year-old Robert Peast disappeared after he allegedly was last seen with Gacy. This morning, police searched Gacy's home and found the decomposed remains of three bodies in a dirt crawl space under the house. They suspect there are several more bodies buried here. It's suspected because of the looks of the area down in the, uh, the uh, crawl space. Uh, there are some other mounds and uh, appears to be more there. Gacy is a 36-year-old building contractor who reportedly dressed like a clown to entertain at children's parties. Prosecutors say he once went to prison for a sex offense in Iowa. This afternoon, Gacy was charged with murdering Robert Peast. And after hearing the remains of more bodies were found at Gacy's house, Judge Marvin Peters ordered him held without bond. At the hearing, police said Gacy has confessed to the Peace murder. He will be examined by a psychiatrist. Meanwhile, investigators have started to dismantle Gacy's house and garage as they continue to search for other bodies in this quiet suburban neighborhood. Police today found six more bodies under the John Gacy house in Norwood Park Township near Des Plaines, Illinois. The six bodies bring the total found under this house and garage to 15, all appearing to have been teenaged boys and young men. And police, digging cautiously with garden tools, say they've now covered only one-fourth of the space under the house. John Gacy, a man who liked to put on a clown suit and entertain children. Now he is charged with one murder, and the police have found, at last count, 27 bodies buried under his house and garage and two more in a nearby river while Gacy is in a hospital bed, tied down. Here's Jim Cummins. John Wayne Gacy was also Pogo the Clown, who loved to make kids laugh. He was married twice, divorced twice, and had two children. A Democratic Party precinct worker with political connections. A modestly successful building contractor. His neighbors knew him as Johnny, the life of the party. He was a very good neighbor, and we socialized with him. Carol Samankowitz was once Gacy's housekeeper and had a couple of dates with him. You didn't expect it from him. I had, uh, he was a nice guy. What kind of uh, um, man was uh, Mr. Mr. Gacy? What kind of a man, how would you characterize him? Oh, I don't know, I characterized him, I, I thought he was a pretty fine person. Very good, very, uh, oh, I was uh, very amiable, I liked him. Even now I like him. I feel sorry for him that this has happened, but he's been a wonderful person, a very generous person to us. Now what kind of a, what kind of a neighbor was he? Very good neighbor. If there was a case that I needed to borrow a tool from the man because he had many good tools, he was more than willing to, to let me have anything I wanted, anything. Now of course we, we know that the problem here is the story of these bizarre occurrences, murders right next door to your home. Did you ever hear anything that would indicate to you that there was foul play going on over there? Never a sound, not a sound, never. Not even, a, you know, like they've asked about screaming or anything, never a sound out of that house. It's always been a quiet house. Never any noise or anything? No, other than maybe doing some construction work at night, outside a little loudness that way, sawing and things like that, but I attribute that to his work. Let me ask you something else you said about uh, he seemed to have uh, odd hours. Uh, would you explain to me what kinds of things you heard going on at night or whatever? Well, it would be basically loading his vehicles. His trucks were coming constantly. And I, at all hours of the night, they would come in. That might be strange, but I attribute that, that to work. He, his remodeling, sometimes they'd load a truck up at 1, 2 in the morning, and then off it would go. I never knew where it went to, but the lads got in the truck and took it away. Or they would come back with, with, with material. 
These were young men coming yes, young back men. and forth? They were always young men that he had working for him. Now, did you ever have any indication that uh, there was any kind of foul play going on? He was supposedly a homosexual. Was there any indication of that? No, there never was anything. I only had my own suspicions of why he was always surrounded by so many young people. Always young males. Never older persons. Always young people. Did you ever talk to him about this late night activity, that kind of thing? Uh, only at night if they got too carried away and would get a little too noisy. I've gotten up at 1.30 and 2 in the morning and when he was sawing out there and I would ask him to cease it and he says, sorry, Ed, he says, I'll stop right away. You know, because I had to get up for work the next day. I said, John, that's annoying to have you sawing with a power saw out in the garage at 1, 2 in the morning. And he'd done that on a, on a, a number of occasions. How do you feel now, thinking back on those incidents, that noise late at night, and then knowing what you know now about these murders? Well, uh, now I, I, I kind of see some of the stuff that was going on. It probably was something pertaining to what he was doing. A number of times he'd come home with his car now at night, at hours at odd hours of the night, He'd go back out to jump in the car and off he'd go again. Those were the hours that he carried on. But I thought it was business, but it, it probably was some of this foul play, maybe bringing some of these young people in. Do you think he could have been carrying bodies in and out of there? Uh, a few times the trunk was open. You know, he, he could swing in because of circular driveway to his house, and that also, at the light would, it was always his habit. He swapped the light off, switched the light off that had it on the outside, and uh, a little while the trunk would open, and the, it was the same thing. He was in there digging around what he was removing. I never seen, but then eventually the trunk would get closed, and uh, he'd close it and go in the house or retire after that, or he'd take off. He'd also, his lights were on all hours of the night, or all night long they'd be on. One of John Gacy's neighbors said, all of this is like a nightmare, and it will be several years before this neighborhood recovers from that nightmare. Gacy's home has become a tourist attraction. Every day for a week, outsiders came here to see bodies brought out of Gacy's house. His neighbors will never forget that. You, you see bodies in your sleep, you see him in your sleep, it's just too much. Today, a young man named Jeff Rignall filed a criminal complaint alleging Gacy raped him. And Rignall suggested Gacy may have had an accomplice. The crowd stayed away from Gacy's house today because police said they think they found all the bodies in the house. They plan to search the yard when the sub-zero weather breaks. That's when they also plan to resume dragging this river where they found two bodies so far and expect to find three more. The search for victims of John Wayne Gacy may be shifted to the basement of this building on Chicago's near north side. A carpenter has told authorities that when Gacy's contracting company remodeled the basement in 1976, it had a bad smell, which Gacy blamed on dead rats. The subcontractor also claimed that Gacy worked at night in the basement pouring concrete. So far, the 28 bodies attributed to Gacy were found exactly where Gacy told authorities to look, in the crawl space of his suburban home or in a nearby river. There has been no mention till now of any other location. In court on Tuesday, a Gacy victim who lived. Jeff Rignell claims to have been chloroformed and raped by Gacy. Rignell wants the charges against Gacy changed from misdemeanor to felony. Rignell claims that when he first complained of Gacy's sexual attack on him, police treated it as a joke. Rignell's complaint was last May. Since then, at least one more youth, Robert Peast, has disappeared. And though Robert Peast's body has not been identified among the 28 Gacy victims in the Cook County morgue, it is the Peast murder with which Gacy is charged. In Chicago, the John Gacy mass murder trial is nearing an end. Norma Quarles has details. The summed up its case against John Wayne Gacy, accused of killing 33 young men. Prosecutor Terry Sullivan called Gacy's insanity defense hogwash. In his confession, Gacy admitted killing the young men after having sex with them, then burying most of the bodies under his house. The prosecutor called Gacy a vile, evil, diabolical murderer who must be held responsible for his acts. Gacy chuckled. John Wayne Gacy was found guilty today in Chicago of the murder of 33 young men and boys, all of whom he either induced or forced to have sexual relations with him. He buried most of the bodies under his house and got rid of the others elsewhere. Norma Quarles reports.
It took the jury of seven men and five women less than two hours to find John Wayne Gacy guilty of murdering 33 young men. Gacy was convicted of murdering more people than anyone else in U.S. history. He showed no emotion as the verdict was read. Families of the victims wept when the verdict was read. I spoke to Mrs. Eugenia Gotzik, mother of 17-year-old Gregory. I can't help it. I cry all the time. Because I'm happy that they convicted him. I hope he does get the electric chair. Then it'll make everybody feel better. I'm sure it'll make the other mothers feel better, too. Prosecutor William Kunkel had told the jury not to show sympathy, only justice. What I suggested to them was that if they allowed that man, John Gacy, to walk the earth, then indeed God help us all. ...who committed what may be the crime of the century. His name is John Wayne Gacy, convicted of killing 33 innocent people and destroying hundreds of lives. He's never talked to anyone about the case the until the tonight. And, and the honesty of it, if they want to be convinced or brainwashed into what they believe, then fine, then go ahead and kill me. But vengeance is mine, say it the Lord, because you will have executed somebody that didn't commit the crime. Those are the words of John Wayne Gacy, pleading innocence from death row at Menard State Penitentiary 13 years after being convicted of his crimes, the most notorious serial killer of our time. When they paint the image that I was this monster who, who picked up like these altar boys along the street and swatted them like flies, I said, this is ludicrous. But despite all this evidence, he says he has proof he didn't do it. Here's one of dozens of examples of what he calls proof. I've taken th uh, five and a half hours, three and a half hours of truth serum. And under, under sodium amethyl, the maximum amount that I could have, it shows that I have no knowledge of the crime whatsoever. Never have had. But this is where his attempt to change history, which is what he thinks will get him a new trial, begins to break down. There is no proof anywhere that he ever took truth serum. Now, it's not only a matter of physical evidence, it's a character issue as well. Many times during our interview, he tried to portray himself as a good guy, an ethical, hard-working family man. Here's how he describes himself as a father. Loving and caring. I I've always uh, looked after my children, even now. What kind of values you remember imparting to them? The kind were of values? You strict, were you strict with them, too? No, not, no not as strict as, no. A lot of things that my dad did, I, I refused to do, because I, I don't, see, I don't believe in hitting, hitting children. I don't believe in, in uh, spoiling a child, either. My, my values are such, are such that if you give enough you love to a child... You're of murdering 33 kids, <laughs> and you say you didn't believe in hitting. I mean... Well, anybody that knows, you see, first of all, you're basing, you're basing this garbage on what you've heard of me. And the prosecutor who put him in jail says Gacy is a ruthless and sadistic killing machine. He's responsible. He knew exactly what he was doing. He planned it in advance. He carried it out, and he enjoyed it. And he admitted it. In fact, boasted of it to the police. But now, 14 years later, he's denying it and talking to me about it. What does Prosecutor Kunkel think of that? He's a desperate man. He's going to die in two or three years. He's going to be executed when the law is finally carried out. And he'll clutch at any straw. Two and a half hours of clutching at straws, cunning and manipulative denials. But if you listen carefully, you catch him slipping up. About John Bukovic, for instance, his second victim. What happened to, uh, what, what happened in the Bukovic case? Where was he picked up and uh, how did he get to the house and what happened with him? I don't want to go into. I don't want to go into the other, uh, the five that I know about. Just take it that I did. Uh, Buckerbitz is not one that I killed, so I don't know nothing about him. The, the little bit that I know about him is that he was an employee of my. See, when you, when you look about this this recall business, and and I'm not a prosecutor, John, but you just. I know you're not. Wait a minute. Is not one that you killed, which suggests that maybe oh. in fact there were others that you did kill. No, no. Okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry if I led you to believe. No, strike it then. Charge me with any, anything. Charge me with complicity in two of the murders. Just two? That's all I know about. That's his story, that he didn't kill anyone. Just an accomplice, he says, and that he helped dispose of two. One of them, Robert Peace, who was 15 years old when he went to the house on Somerdale. Gacy owned a construction company and invited young Peace to apply for a job. Robert Peace was killed by another individual in my home. How did he get to your home? Uh, he was transported to the house by another. 
How did the other, whoever he was, kill Robert Peace? I believe he was strangled. You were there, right? Not during the crime, but I was there afterwards, and I watched the removal of the body. And what, what happened to the body afterwards? It was one that was... That, it was that body was put into the river. taken to the river and dumped in the river. Did you help do that? Yes, I'm, I'm in complicity with that. I've always, I've always contended. Don't, don't look at me as an innocent babe of the woods. Not for a second would I look at John Gacy as a babe in the woods. He may be admitting now only to being an accomplice. But 13 years ago, when he was arrested, he confessed to almost everything. You have all the bodies, Gacy said, and there was even a killer map showing where 27 youths were buried. And in fact, he led police to his garage and sprayed orange paint on the concrete to mark the spot precisely where a body was found. No, 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 no. Now, he says, he was simply marking a spot where some new concrete had been poured. In regards to going out into the garage, yes, I know I went to the house, and yes, I know I walked in the garage, and they asked me where the last section of concrete was poured. Okay. I said, there's the last section where the last section of concrete was poured. Okay. They are the ones that took the orange can of paint and said, here, put a mark there. So I put an X there. So the paint was not to identify the place of burial? No. No, it never was. They asked me where but according to authorities who were with Casey that morning, he made more than just an X on the floor. He sprayed a stick figure with the orange spray can in the garage. Not just a mark, a stick figure showing the orientation of the body. Right underneath that stick figure, exactly where he drew it, pointed in the direction he drew it, was the body of John Buckingham. Yeah. And then there's the Gacy confession about how he killed his victims. Strangled them with his now infamous rope trick that police say he demonstrated to them with a rosary bead. He says he was simply discussing knots in general. Catch his sense of humor. Too late, huh? You're in trouble now. <laughs> yeah, right. Are you afraid of sitting that close to me? What the hell? Oh, this is too long. I oh, don't need it this long. Okay. I had a rosary, which I carried in my pocket. I've always carried a rosary. It was my communion uh, rosary. They said, well, what, what kind of... Uh, a knot to you use. I said, what do you mean knot? When I tie things up, I, I says, uh, depending on what I'm using it for, I said, the only thing I ever learned was from Boy Scouts is a tourniquet knot. He said, well, show us what that is. So I took, at that time, it, and again, it's together, but in order to demonstrate it here, I took the rosary and I said, well, here, you, you put it around. This is hard trying to do this. Why don't you put your hand out? Okay, here. What I told him, I said, here, all you do is you, you wrap it around. You put one knot in it, and I said, then you put a second knot in it, okay? Mm -hmm. I said, then you take a stick and stick it in here, and you just turn this, and I said, it causes an tourniquet. I said, that's the only knot I ever learned. Precisely the kind of knot found on the ropes, wrapped around the necks of the victims found under the house on Summer Day.